When someone mentions an iron gun, you're probably thinking of a futuristic weapon from a science fiction movie. However, the truth is that the leading scientists of our world have been using this technology already for decades. Let us find out what we can do with an iron gun under the scanning electron microscope. Hello, my name is Maidok. And I'm Hella Maid. In this video, we will demonstrate how to use a focused ion beam under a scanning electron microscope for various applications that include studying sophisticated substrates or even creating microscopic structures. In case you didn't know, the focused ion beam is created with this ion gun over here that is mounted to the scanning electron microscope. The other end of the ion gun is inside the microscope and aimed at the sample that we study. So, let us power up the ion gun and get started. In order to use the ion gun, the studied substrate needs to be tilted. Therefore, the sample must be firmly attached to the holder. This can be achieved with the help of a silver paste or mechanical holders. Focused ion beam cross-sectioning is one of the most widely used techniques to study the interior of a substrate. Can you show us how it works? I can't wait to get my hands on an ion gun. Certainly. Let us study a titanium-aluminium alloy and see what secrets lie hidden in the material. The first thing we need to do is to find a suitable site. Once a site of interest is found, a thin layer of platinum is deposited there as it allows us to make a cleaner cut. Next, a cross-section of desired size is carved out with the focused iron beam and the edge is polished in multiple stages at lower beam currents. Finally, the interior of the site of interest is studied under the scanning electron microscope. As can be seen from the image, the alloy appears to consist of two different types of materials that are clearly distinguishable. Mapping the distribution of elements by energy dispersive microanalysis confirms that some regions have higher content of titanium, while others have more aluminium. Furthermore, a higher magnification image reveals that the titanium and aluminium grains are separated by microscopic cracks. Based on these studies, it can be concluded that this alloy has a very poor quality and should certainly not be used in any application where good mechanical properties are required. Fascinating! Is it also possible to make this cutting and imaging process automatic and use the gathered data to make a three-dimensional recreation of the interior of the site of interest? Of course! It is more time-consuming, but it is an excellent way to study substrates that have a very sophisticated microscopic structure. For instance, the scientists at the Institute of Chemistry at the University of Tartu are using this technique to study the porosity of the cathodes they develop for solid oxide fuel cells. I'm a little lost here. What exactly are solid oxide fuel cells? An excellent question that deserves to be answered by an expert. Let's find one. Hello Martin, can you tell us what exactly are solid oxide fuel cells? Solid oxide fuel cell is an electrochemical device that converts uh, potential chemical energy into electrical energy without the intermediate uh, mechanical energy step. This uh, electrochemical system consists of porous anode and cathode separated by electrolyte which in this case is ion conducting solid uh, ceramic material. In order for a continuous electrochemical reaction to happen, electrons must move from anode to cathode. And the only way to do that is through outer circuit. And this is where we can harness the electric current. Fascinating. What are the major challenges in the solid oxide fuel cell technology at the moment? Well, I'm glad you asked. There is plenty of room for development. The most important is to decrease the cost of technology, at the same time increase the lifespan. But efficiency and activity must be improved as well. For example, fuel cells can be made more efficient by utilizing anodes and cathodes with optimal porosity. To get these structures, 
a theme characterization and 3D reconstruction can be applied. This is a very useful approach to uh, calculate parameters like porosity, surface area, tortosity and others. Thank you for your time. No problem. Over here we have a modern transmission electron microscope which is one of the most powerful tools a material scientist can use. This microscope can achieve even atomic resolution, but it comes with a price. The samples need to be very thin, 10 nanometers or so. Making a material so thin, however, is no simple task, but it can be done with the focused ion beam under a scanning electron microscope. For that purpose, a thin lamella is cut out of the sample with the focused ion beam and extracted carefully with a nano-manipulator. Once the lamella is attached to a special holder and thinned even further, it can be studied under the transmission electron microscope. Is there something more that could be done with the ion gun? Well, the focused ion beam can also be used to create microscopic structures for a variety of applications, like creating nanopattern surfaces for scientific experiments. However, the ion gun can also be used for making a special birthday present or even for creating a truly unique logo for your company. It is also possible to create secret messages with the focused ion beam by carving a desired text or schematics on a surface. These would be so small that they are invisible for the naked eye and only readable by someone who has a scanning electron microscope and knows where to look. So that's how you can use the focused ion beam to study sophisticated substrates and even create microscopic structures for a variety of applications. What would you do if you got your hands on an ion gun? And what should we study next under the scanning electron microscope? Let us know by writing your thoughts to the comment section below and be sure to visit our channel. Bye!